Well, good morning, Clearview Church. Sorry for the delay in the morning devotion hour. Uh, that was completely and totally my fault. A little technical difficulty, but we've got that straightened out here at the shop. So I hope everybody's having a great Monday morning, a great start to your morning. Life's going to be a beautiful day, a warm day, but definitely a beautiful, beautiful day. And so I'm thankful you could gather here uh, with us this morning. Uh, so thankful uh, for so many of you who um, commented on uh, and text. Um, messaged on uh, yesterday's service, um, the music, and uh, on the message, and we thank God for God's help, and so we pray that it was a help to you, and pray that it will continue to help you in the days to come. But I uh, want to say thank you again for uh, how God moved and worked in my heart, and I pray that He did in your heart as well. Um, just uh, want to ask you to continue to pray for our pastor as he continues to build his strength back up. Um, from all that's, that's happening going on in his life as far as uh, from the virus and thankful for God's um, restoration power not only spiritually but physically as well and so we pray for him and, and brother Jim and sister Carol pray that they are doing better this morning I have not talked to him this morning this album is Beverly all you all that are it's slowly popping up who's coming on um, but uh, so thankful you could join us this morning uh, for this time of devotion I won't, I won't be long this morning, won't take long this morning, but just give you a quick word of encouragement. Um, I know there's some of us out here um, that God is calling us to do things that um, just seem so far beyond um, our ability. And can I remind you that anything God calls us to do is beyond our ability. Um, it wouldn't be of God if it, was, uh, if it just had to do with us. But when He's in the midst of it, it will be impossible for us. Uh, but all things are possible with God, and we're thankful for the Word of God. Good morning, Ms. Doors. And uh, so we, we want to encourage you this morning, uh, if you've got your Bibles, if you want to turn over to 1 Kings chapter 17. I was uh, preaching in 2 Kings 4 yesterday on the uh, one of the um, miracles of Elisha. But now I want to go back to um, uh, his mentor, uh, that one who, um, uh, who just absolutely raised him up to be the man of God that God had called him to be, um, and that is the prophet Elijah. And one of the first miracles of Elijah that we read about is here in 1 Kings 17, and I love this story. I preached from this many, many times, um, but the Lord just laid upon my heart. There are us who are struggling, uh, not just struggling, but God is calling us into several areas of opportunity to minister in ways that um, we not, may, may not make sense to us right now especially with all the things that are going on around us. Well, can I remind you that Elijah lived during a time when there was idolatrous worship all throughout the land of Israel. Uh, there was a wicked king um, who was in authority, who had a wicked wife, who instituted and brought in Baal worship. Uh, we find in 1 Kings 17 there was a great famine in the land, and so it was very difficult, not only just for the people who would follow after the king's orders, but those who were... Uh, who wanted to hold to the truth of who God was and God's Word and continue to worship the God, Jehovah God, it was difficult for them as well. Uh, probably even more difficult because there was uh, much opposition to them um, just based upon the decrees of the land and what was going on during this time. But Elijah had been hidden away by God. God sent Elijah down to, um, to Zareb. And I, I'm going to begin reading here this morning. Uh, in verse number 10 because I want us to look at just this simple story of how God will, will do multiple things here. God will give us a proclamation, God will give us provision, and God will give us preservation in the midst of doing what He has commanded us to do. But in the prophet Elijah's life we find this as he comes on the scene very boldly and very quickly. It says, So he arose and went down to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going down to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, liveth I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. 
For thus says the Lord of God, of, for the, thus, thus says the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until that until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days, and the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah. Now this beautiful this beautiful story, that's not an allegory. This is not just uh, something for us to read and pass over. But this is a very intentional story for you and for me. It was written to the Old Testament in the Old Testament to the Israelites that they might understand that even in the midst of pagan idolatry, even in the midst of famine, even in the midst of peril in the land, God still has a remnant. God still has some folks who are willing to serve God, who are willing to stand up and serve God despite all the circumstances. And can I say in the day we live in, we may not be living in a, a day of famine as far as food is concerned, but there is definitely a spiritual famine in the nation that we live in, even in the state we live in, in the county we live in. Greenville County has more churches, Pickens County has more churches on every corner than, than any other county I believe around, possibly in our state. But yet there is a spiritual famine in our land. And there is much idolatry, much worship of other things going on all around us. It may not be other gods, little G-O-D-S's, that are statues or stones sitting on, um, uh, on someone's mantle or in some place of worship. But can I say, every time you open up your wallet, there's a dollar bill there possibly, or a credit card or a debit card or whatever it may be. People are worshiping money today. People were worshiping power today. People are worshiping themselves today. People are worshiping a job today. People are worshiping family and all other sorts of things that necessarily may not seem wrong uh, looking at them from the first hand uh, ex uh, from the from the first hand glance or from the first glance of them but can I say they are wrong because they come before God and so in a land such as today God still has a remnant in an hour such as today God still has some people who desire to serve him and be faithful to him much like the prophet Elijah and even this widow woman and so we find that God is calling us in this day, in this hour, to stand out and serve. To, to stand out, not in a way that would bring attention to ourselves, but that would bring attention to the Lord Jesus Christ. To stand out in a way that God's Word would be vocalized more than just by voice, but by indeed. For James told us this, not be, don't be just hearers of the Word, but doers as well. I believe we've got a lot of hearers of the Word, but not very many doers of the Word. And so in Elijah's day, I'm sure there were many hearers of the word. For the, I believe the word of God still was being somewhat upheld in a Levitical or a law fashion. But yet it was not in the hearts of the people. And so Elijah was the man that God had on the scene for this time. And so he gives this wonderful story to Israel for them to understand that even in the midst of famine, even in the midst of peril, God still has a man and God's power will still prevail. And in the midst of this story, we see that God will ask us, to do many hard things. God's proclamation, what was it? It was to Elijah to go to the widow woman and say, make me a cake, provide for me something to eat. Although Elijah had just been, had, a, had provision given to him uh, to the Lord by the brook Cherith. We find that God had fed him by ravens, dirty birds. So God had definitely, or Elijah had definitely seen the power of God to provide even in the midst of this famine-like situation. But he goes to this widow woman and this widow woman then gives Elijah this story that, hey, listen, I'm getting ready to bake our last little bit of meal, getting to drink a last little bit of water, and we're just going to die. But the proclamation of God was to ask this widow woman to provide, and then God's proclamation through Elijah was, bake me a cake, bring me something to drink, and then you can bake yourself a cake. See, the issue was this. There was a lack of faith in the land. There was a lack of belief in the land that Jehovah could still provide or that God was still God. There was actually some confusion. Was Baal Jehovah or was Jehovah Baal? There was all sorts of chaos and confusion taking place. But God sent a man by this widow woman's way that Israel might have this story to look back on to see that there was a, there was a man of God who had the word of God who had the power of God upon him, who had the faith of God, so to speak, or faith in God, and this woman would demonstrate, because of, his, because of the word of God, she would demonstrate 
her belief in that word, in that power, and, and take by faith this precious truth. See, when God calls us to do things that are unusual, when God calls us to do things that may seem somewhat impossible, see, we have to take the element of self completely out of it. I'm sure Elijah, once he, he told this woman to bring him a cake, and she gives him this sad story that I'm getting ready to take this last little bit and die. Me and my son are going to die. I'm sure there was a lump that grew in Elijah's throat. But the word of God was built up in Elijah to the point where Elijah believed the Lord and Elijah allowed God to speak through him in such a way that it would bring about not just a promise for another cake, but for a cake or for cakes to come down the road, for, for meal to be in the barrel continuously. So the woman, what did she do? By faith, she took the proclamation of God which God proclaimed through the prophet Elijah to heart. And she allowed that to bud precious faith in her life. And through that proclamation and through her obedience to that proclaim, that proclaimed word, the, proclaim, the proclamation of the word of God through the prophet Elijah, what did it do? It brought about great provision, not only for the prophet, but for the widow and for her son. Can I remind you that when God proclaims something to us and desires to do something through us, He will provide that for us. He will not only provide for us, but He will provide for those others that are in, in the way of the message or, or whatever we're delivering to them, the proclamation we're bringing to them. God will provide in such a way, such as when, when Jesus lives through us and proclaims his word, not only through us verbally, but through us uh, working it out through us, God will provide in ways, not only for us, but God will provide in ways for them in which they could never imagine, ask, or think. When we allow the words of Christ, the proclamation of Christ to be issued through our lives, much like the prophet Elijah did for this widow woman here, he will begin to sustain individuals for all of eternity when they call upon his son, when they call upon his name in precious faith, believing that he is what they need for the provision in their life, the provision of salvation, that, 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 that absolute, that absolute that they must have for them to make it throughout all eternity. See, God has sent us his son that his son may come dwell in us that what? His word may rich, richly dwell in us, that we may go and proclaim so that people may know that there has been a provision that has made, been made for them through God's precious Son. And that provision is what? That he died on the cross for sin. He was buried in a barn to raised on the third day that you and I might have life and have it more abundantly. Just like in Elijah's situation with this widow woman, he gave a proclamation, he made provision, but then he gave preservation. For not just for one day or for two days or for three days, but until it rained again. That mill barrel never ran dry for that widow and that son. That mill barrel, mill barrel constantly, it was constantly filled, or it was constantly had just enough in it. Not filled, but constantly had just enough in it to sustain them day by day. To preserve them and to the point when rain would fall upon the earth again. What a blessing it is to know that God, in the midst of his proclamation and his provision, he gives preservation to his saints. He gives preservation to his children. He gives preservation to those who will call upon him by precious faith. And he makes that provision upon the face of this earth until that eternal day of preservation may come about where you and I will never have to worry about food again. We'll never have to worry about spiritual food. We'll never have to worry about physical food. We'll never have to worry about any of those things. Why? Because God will simply be all that we need for all of eternity. Christ in his position, his place, will be our, our not only our proclamation, not only our provision, but our preservation. And what a blessed truth it is for you and I to know that in this difficult hour, in this difficult day, that God has given us a word. He desires to speak a word, to do a work through us and in us, that what might he do? He might make provision for us, but he might make provision for others because of the proclamation that he gives through us. See, you and I must understand, just like in the prophet Elijah's life, we like to look at Elijah and we like to boast on Elijah. And I used to, be honest with you, 
I was kind of like Elijah. Lord, give me a double portion of the spirit of Elijah. Give me a double portion of the spirit of Elisha. But God's quickly remedied that in me. And he said, I've given you a portion, the spirit of my son, <laughs> which is greater than Elijah, which is greater than Elisha. Why would you need anything else? Can I encourage you today, church? You, have not the, you don't have the spirit of Elijah. You don't have the spirit of Elisha. But you've got the spirit of the living God living within inside you. And that spirit of the living God will do the same for you as he did for Elijah. That what? He will give you a word to speak. He will give you a word to live by. He will give you a provision that will sustain you through that proclamation. And he will give provision to others who will listen to, your, to the proclamation that he has for you through you. And he will allow a way of preservation through this weary life into eternity. See, I want you to understand something. We're drinking, just like the, the mill barrel, what was it? Mill barrel, excuse me, I'll get that right here in a minute. Just like that mill barrel, it never ran dry for that widow and her son until the rain came. You and I are drinking from a fountain that'll never run dry. We're eating from the bread of life, which will never, never be lack. It'll never come to an end. And it's all because of God. It's all because of His Son, Jesus, and their great love, His great love for you and for me. So in this difficult hour, can I say this? Don't be frightened and scared for the ministry, the work that God's calling us into. Because God has got a word that He'll speak through me and through you. And God will continue to provide for us. And God's going to continue to preserve us. I pray that this word will bless you. I pray that you will allow it to take root in your heart. And you will go out with boldness and courage. Much like Elijah. And though that time may come where a lump comes in your throat when you hear what someone may have to say, just allow the Word of God to speak through you. Church, can I pray for us this morning? Father, we love you. We're grateful for your Word. We're grateful for the prophet Elijah. We're grateful for his example. But Lord, we're even more thankful for the Lord Jesus and so thankful for the Spirit of God that lives within us. Now today, Lord, you have brought us into difficult days, much like in the days of Elijah, Lord, where there is spiritual famine in the land. But yet, Lord, there is a word that you have given to us, and that word is Jesus Christ. And it is your word, your holy written word, that we desire to be written in our hearts and on our minds. And so, Father, I pray now that in Jesus' name, that you would use this word in us, that we may proclaim, we may see your provision, and that, Lord, we may come to the expectancy of your preservation. That, God, we may do the work of the ministry that you've set us there to. Thank you again for your kindness towards us. And that you would use even us in these difficult days and difficult hours. That we may, we may expound the truth of the living God unto the masses. That they may begin to eat. They may begin to drink from that which will sustain for all of eternity. We love you. We thank you. Continue to heal those in our church who need your physical touch today. We ask these things in Jesus' name for Jesus' sake. Amen and amen. Well, church, be blessed today. I pray God will be with you in everything that you do, and I pray that you will allow him to use you in such a way today that would cause you even sometimes to scratch your head, but constantly be reminded that God is good all the time. Love you. If you're sick this morning, can I say this? I, I am praying for you. Our church is praying for you. And God is going to bring about, I believe this, I believe God's going to bring about peace and grace in this, this difficult hour. And I know that he will reveal himself to be real in the time that you need it the most. Love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen.